I'm really interested to see what works and what hasn't because I try to talk to my friends at parties about pensions and they walk away and I don't know how to make them stay. Um, what do you, what, what's worked and what hasn't worked with the CalSavers program? Yeah, it's a good question. So before I say something that might be semi-controversial, uh, let me just be really clear that you know we uh, take very take very seriously our responsibility as fiduciaries to provide all of you know all of the disclosures and all of the information um, to offer really good resources for those participants that want it. Um, so for so I guess we think of these uh, of our of our participants in two groups. Really, there's you know, what do we owe everyone in terms of bare minimum on, on disclosures and just information, right? That's easy. We do a very good kind of high quality job of that. And then, you know, for the people who are ready to, to educate themselves and to learn more, we have plenty of good resources online. We have calculators, we have a bilingual mobile app. Uh, since our, you know, since our audience is so multicultural, we have everything and, you know, we're working on a dozen languages right now. Um, you know, we have interactive webinars, we have field representatives, uh, we have email, paper mail, texting, you know, all, all of those good tools. Um, but really that's what we've, what we've discovered is that that's a minority of the, of our participant pool, right? Especially in this scheme of automatic enrollment where we're, you know, really the, the foundation of, of our program, of the Nest program in the UK is that nudges work, uh, all of us across the socioeconomic spectrum sometimes need a little a little nudge in the right direction to do the thing that we already know is, is good for us. So in that context, um, and this is the part that, you know, some people might see as a little sensitive, but, you know, take yes for an answer, basically. If if you have, right now we have a 65% participation rate um, um, among employees uh, with our registered employers. And we're really proud of that, given that, again, the median population is $25,000 a year. Unlike the UK program, we have no employer match, no government match. It's just employees saving their own darn money. Um, so <clears throat> we're really, we're thrilled that 65% of, of workers are uh, kind of overnight saving 5% of their pay now. And so we don't want to disrupt the good behavior that we are seeing. And so while we would love to engage more with, with our participants and build, you know, use this as kind of the core and build out a broader financial literacy program. We're thinking about that in a longer term perspective. How do you, how do you make sure that people know that you're there for them, but without, you know, mm -hmm. getting them too close? Yeah, for us at Hoop, it's all about knowing our members um, and what their needs and expectations are, and then delivering clear and simple communication on multiple channels. Um, so this is why at Hoop, we are always doing research and surveying, surveying our members. Um, so we know that our members have low confidence in their own financial decision making, and they want us to help them understand all the information that they have to wade through. Um, many have greater trust in sources other than us. Uh, for example, in our recent uh, research that we conducted, which focused on members who left their employer and needed to decide whether to take their commuted value out of the plant, a third of those listed the conversation that they had with their financial advisor as the most important factor that influencing their decision. So this was higher than the information that they would have received from us in their package. And we know pension members everywhere are now facing great temptation to take out their commuted value. So all of that just adds up to a risky situation that makes these decisions even harder for them to make. So at Hoop, we, um, we address the communication challenge uh, through a multi-leveled approach. We have our very broad uh, communication. We have our website and mass communication, you know, we have newsletters that we send out to members uh, to give them general information to keep them informed. Uh, we recently issued a mass communication to all of our members, uh, just reminding them that Hoop remains strong during the volatile markets of 2020 and how we're evolving our investment strategies. So the purpose of that communication was to give members reassurance that during a difficult time, their pension remains secure. Mm -hmm. We also have our personalized packages as members go through an event uh, that are customized to them. And we do regional town halls virtually now, uh, where we present information to large groups of members and answer uh, their questions. And finally, and most important for us, uh, is our personal service model. 
So we've evolved to uh, this, ser this service model in the last few years where a dedicated hoop representative calls every member going through an event and helps them to make their decision. In some cases, those discussions are straightforward uh, and, and other times they can be much more complex. And what we want to ensure is that we give the member all the time and attention that they need so that they're making an informed decision. So for us, this high touch service is very important and it's reflected also in the internal metrics that we use uh, on uh, evaluating our member services staff. Uh, we want it to be clear that uh, an informed member is the most important outcome, not the number of interactions that you have with members or the number of phone calls. So you've been working pensions a lot and you must have seen what works here and what doesn't work. And I'm sure pension schemes all around the country and all around the world are spending a fortune on outreach programmes that just are failing. How? What are the good ones? That you, and obviously you don't speak specifics, but how, how are people doing this well? I mean, I think we just hit, I mean, I think we hit, heard a, you know, a really striking testimonial from Ivana around the way that you can, in, you know, in a world-class pension fund, which is set in an industry, which has that, that level of coherence to begin with, um, a way in which you can, you, you can do this stuff really effectively. Um, and then from Katie, you know, building an extraordinary program at CalSavers, you know, the significance can't be underestimated, but starting from a different place with a very different, um, audience and, and you know that we haven't spoken about contributions yet I mean the difference in the in the magnitude of the pension contributions being made either on behalf of or by the, the members so you know if we if we just take an app and I say some of um, you know IFM shareholders in Australia the biggest industry funds you know have, have you know have pretty sophisticated app based engagement um, now uh, for the purpose in particular of trying to encourage individuals when they move job uh, to re remain with their existing pension fund. So, you know, that's a practical way in which you try and use that sort of engagement. But I think the evidence of its effectiveness, again, is very limited. Mm. Um, just for the reasons we know about pensions, you know, I mentioned before that, um, you know, it, that there's real challenges with engagement in pensions, both on the, the actual outcomes of engagements. Does it lead to better outcomes defined as bigger pensions? But also, actually, around other issues which are really important in pensions. So, for example, at what point do we think that that's the use of resources is better spent on that than, in, say, on an investment strategy which is a bit more expensive but gets access to an asset class, um, you know, where the long-term returns are likely to be you know uh, better than in in a in a, a asset class which you would otherwise invest in if you're your budget was lower. I think that stuff becomes very important. You know, putting engagement alongside other things that pension funds do, admin, you know, not making administration mistakes is, you know, an obvious one. Or at least if you make administration mistakes, um, being able to remedy them very quickly. A wise person once said to me, there's no scheme that, that doesn't make mistakes, Greg. It's how quickly they can be remedied. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, into the, you know, the investment budget. And you know, is that a better a better use of a buck? Just finally, in the UK context, um, I mean, you've seen really with auto enrolment, uh, it's brought in similarly to CalSavers, it's brought in ten million people into pension saving. A significant majority have probably never had a pension plan before, and you know, the the, the likelihood of quickly turning those. Uh, savers into engaged investors is extremely low. Now, we might say the, the objective isn't to make them investors. It's to have an awareness that they are growing a pension. And maybe the best thing to be said for engagement is that even if one takes a set and forget view, and that's that's my view too, Katie, everyone takes a set and forget view, um, at, at the retirement point, certainly in defined contribution systems, again, a difference from who. And a defined contribution system, there has to be a modicum of engagement, at least that in retirement, to, to translate that pot into some sort of retirement income. And probably engagement's best focus in trying at, at that later stage and trying to, to um, enable members to be involved enough that they can, in concert, hopefully with a fiduciary 
scheme make the, the best possible decision around around the retirement.